Now, first off, in order to understand the experiment on determining the resistivity of a wire, it is crucial that we really understand what resistivity actually is. A formula you would have covered in A level is that resistance is proportional to the length of the wire and it's inversely proportional to the area. Now the constant of proportionality is known as resistivity and it's given this symbol rho which is actually just the Greek letter rho spelled like this. So, in order to determine the resistivity, we need to be able to measure the resistance per given length of the wire. We we'll also need to measure the cross-sectional area of the wire. Here is the circuit that we're going to be using. We have a little power supply that is connected to a nanometer, as always in series. We also have a little resistor over here. The purpose of this resistor is simply to limit the current that is going through the circuit at any given time for safety reasons and to avoid overheating of the wire. Now, we also have a wire that has been attached to a ruler. We also have a voltmeter that we can vary the position of the point at which it connects to the wire. This could be done either with a uh, jockey device or it can be done with crocodile clips. But crucially, what this circuit allows us is to vary the length of this piece of wire from here, let's say, to here, and measure the PD across it, measure the current for it, and hence calculate the resistance of this piece of wire. Now, what measurements are we going to take? First off, we're going to need to measure the diameter of a wire with a micrometer screw gauge. Why do we need a micrometer screw gauge? Typically, the diameter of a wire is smaller than a millimeter or of the order of millimeters, so we definitely want to use a micrometer screw gauge. We're going to be taking multiple measurements along the wire and then we're going to find the mean. Why are we taking multiple measurements along the wire? This is really important because let's say if this here is the length of the wire L, the diameter may vary along the wire so we need to ensure that uh, this is constant and the only way to check that really is to take multiple measurements along the wire and then find the mean. Please note that we'll also be taking measurements of the potential difference across the wire with a voltmeter. So this will be the points here and let's say here, we're going to be able to vary this point over here. Then we can also measure the current with an ammeter, with an ammeter and obviously the length of the wire L with a ruler, which is actually just attached to the wire like so. Okay, well, let's have a look at our procedure next. Let's have a look at our procedure. So we mentioned we're going to be varying the length of the wire by adjusting the crocodile clips and measuring the voltage of a different length of wire. Then for each length, we're going to be measuring the voltage V and the current I. Using this, we'll be able to calculate our resistance R using the fact that R is equal to V divided by I. So this column just here will be just populated using R is equal to V over I, which is going to give us the result in ohms. By varying the length of the wire, we are going to be able to find the resistance for each length. And now let's have a look at our analysis. Once we have multiple readings of R for given lengths, we're going to plot a graph of the resistance against the length and we're going to be able to find the gradient. Let's do our y is equal to mx plus c analysis. The equation in question is that R is equal to the resistivity multiplied by the length divided by the area. Now if R is on the y-axis and if L is on the x-axis, 
axis, we're expecting the graph to be a straight line from the origin as shown. So we could just apply our rules that y is equal to mx plus c. We're going to find that the gradient will be equal to the resistivity divided by the cross-sectional area. So our gradient m is simply equal to the resistivity divided by the area. We're just going to use our standard rules for finding the gradient and I'm going to make my gradient triangle as large as possible to reduce the percentage uncertainty. I'm going to say that the resistivity of the material is equal to the gradient M multiplied by the cross-sectional area. If I want to be really, really precise, remember we have actually measured the diameter of the wire so the resistivity will be equal to m times pi multiplied by d over 2. We measured the diameter squared because this right here is the formula for the area of a circle. So what are some common sources of uncertainty in this experiment? First off, the crocodile clip may not be at the zero point on the ruler. This is the most common one that I've noticed while teaching this subject. Additionally, there is some resistance of the clips themselves, which uh, would be providing a systematic error. Now, because there's a little bit of extra resistance, rather than the graph being a straight line through the origin, let's say in a graph of R against L, if there's a little bit of extra resistance, the graph may be shifted upwards a little bit. Now, because it is a systematic error, and remember systematic errors are actually affecting all of your results, the gradient itself will be completely unaffected. You can see over here on the right that both lines have exactly the same gradient, so our result should not really be affected because uh, our resistivity was just uh, equal to the gradient times the cross-sectional area. Another really, really important one is that the wire must not heat up as it is temperature dependent. So this experiment will actually work at lower currents and lower voltages. Okay guys, well I hope you found this video useful. Thank you very much for watching. If you're revising energy power and resistance, have a look at the link of my revision video on this subject. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.